Moments of Inspiration, brought to you by the Presbyterian Church of Trinidad and Tobago. It is our prayer that this Presbyterian outreach program inspires you to start this new day with God, who has granted you the gift of today. Good morning, friends, and welcome to Moments of Inspiration. I am Rev. Shivan Siloch of the Oropuch Pastoral Region with the Presbyterian Church of Trinidad and Tobago. I feel blessed to be leading you in today's devotion. I thank you for allowing us into your homes this morning and for the opportunity to spend the next 30 minutes in prayer, praise and worship and reading and proclamation of God's word. In scripture, God has always shown a preferential bias for the poor, those in need, those who have been marginalized in society, such as the widow and the orphan. We as Christians are called to stand in solidarity with them. Every Saturday, the 19th of November, the world will be commemorating Universal Children's Day. Therefore, for today's episode, we will be focusing on the theme, Standing in Solidarity with Children. I invite you to bow with me in prayer. Let us pray. Beloved Father in heaven, Father of us all, as we begin this new week, we give you due honor and glory and praise for your hand at work among us. Spend the next few moments with us as you spent time with Adam and Eve in their home in the garden. Speak to us in these moments as you did with the prophets. Teach us as Christ taught the disciples. Inspire us and direct us as your Holy Spirit did with the early church at the Pentecost experience. May we at the end of these moments be able to confirm our relationship with you in a stronger and more convicted passion uh, that really gives you the honor you deserve. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Starting our worship today is Mrs. Indra Rampasad, a devoted organist, a singer who deserves well-noted praise, serving wherever called across the Presbyterian Church, including my region. She leads us now with the devotional hymn, Be Still and Know That I Am God. Yeah. 
Thank you, Miss Indra, for setting the tone for our worship today. We focus now on the Word of God, which comes to us today from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 18, verses 2 to 6. He called a child whom he put among them and said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it will be better for you if a great millstone were fastened around your neck and you were drowned in the depth of the sea. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. As mentioned before, we are commemorating this coming Saturday, Universal Children's Day. And so we dedicate this episode of Moments of Inspiration to our beloved, beautiful children of this nation of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. I invite you to reflect with me for the next few moments on the theme, Solidarity with Children. We bow in prayer. Lord, as we focus our thoughts on children this week, inspire us now, we pray, such that our reflections lead us to actions that bring you honor and glory to your name. Through Christ we pray. Amen. The biblical commentator Matthew Henry would support the direction of our reflections this morning as we emphasize Jesus' direct use of that little child among the crowd with whom he was speaking that day. Henry suggests that there is something critical to note about that physical application. The Gospel writer sets the scene vividly for us. If we were to recreate it, the same imagery could be set in any one of our churches. If we were to put ourselves into that congregation from which Christ called out the child, we could well think what would have happened in our times. The shock of the parents, the raised eyebrows of those around who would have been getting agitated with the child. Now nothing was mentioned about what the child was doing or who the child's parents were. All we know, it was a random pick from Christ. All we can conclude is that Christ labeled that child as humbled and he instructed, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest kingdom in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes once a child in my name welcomes me. A few things well can be learned from the life cycle of the human being from birth to death. As morbid as the thought is, we must have at some time realized or should realize that when we enter this world, we enter helpless when our parents have to take care of us during literally everything for us, from feeding us to changing our diapers and putting us to bed. And when we leave this world, we live in almost the same state of helplessness when children have to take care of parents the same way parents took care of them. The humility Christ is speaking about that the use of this child sheds a different perspective on things. For instance, when babies enter our lives, oh, how anxious are we for them to speak, walk, and play. And when they learn how quick are we to get them to be quiet 
and sit down easy for a while. How nervous are we when they fall and they bruise themselves? How confused we become when they cry and we can't figure out the reason they are crying? How anxious are we to see them in their school uniform and when they start school we can't wait for them to graduate? Remember the teaching process? How much pain they would have been through that when they finally got that full mouth of teeth, we realized how much have they, they could have enjoyed with those teeth. The life lesson of the baby's teething process. Pain leads to happiness. In the adult world, hard work brings success. The humility Christ is calling for when he called out this child from uh, that congregation then is one that necessitates endurance. The kind of endurance God maintains for us even when we fall and bruise. The humility Christ is calling for when he called out this child is one that necessitates patience. How agitated that crowd would have become when he did that. How confused that child and his parents would have become when that happened. Matthew Henry goes further than that to suggest not only patience is needed, but also a complete removal of the ego of pride. By the use of this child, Henry suggests that Jesus is teaching how much we belittle each other when we place ourselves on high pedestals of society. Jesus called the child as a symbol of the lowest of our hierarchical structure in society. The child now developing and not even having statuses yet. One of the reasons that I am here this morning is because within the Presbyterian Church, I am the youngest daddy of our clergy. Yes, they chose me, who is now the happy first time daddy of a 14 month old baby boy. What this child did for me when he came into my life, I was change that temper of mine drastically. From being loud and rowdy, reacting with any kind of vengeance, to a most serene temper that keeps reminding me that this is a baby with whom I am dealing with. The shift of temper had now begun to filter into my own ministry, even in my marriage and among my relationships. The humility to which Christ is calling us is one that will humble us enough to give that listening voice to the boys crying out to be heard. Children too have much to teach us. Even our youths have much to teach us. Too often we try to teach children and youths what we learned from our parents and we fail to recognize that children and youths can teach us something new too. Instead of being overprotective, and making their choices for them that they do not get hurt. Teach them the values and virtues of life and when they need to make their own decisions, they are able to make the right decisions. It is time to stop silencing the voice of this young generation of children and youths. It is time to stand in solidarity with them. Our children are not the leaders of tomorrow. Friends, they are the leaders of today. The grass withers, the flowers fades, and the word of God abides forever. Amen. Since we are celebrating children today, we have with us a very special young lady from the Trinity Presbyterian Church Miss Ariane Jan. She is nine years old and goes to the Keenan Presbyterian Primary School. Ariane blesses us now with a short poem entitled God's Promise 
by Mandy Willing. God's promise. God has not promised skies always blue, flower laid on pathways all our lives through. God has not promised sun without rain, joy without sorrow, peace without pain. But God has promised strength for the day, rest for the labor, light for the way, grace for the trials, help from above, unfailing sympathy, undying love. Thank you. Thank you, Ariane. You did a great job. We bow in prayer. Let us pray. Once again, beloved Father, we humbly bow you before you, lifting each other in prayer. We pray for our children in our homes across this land and across our world. We pray that you bless the ministry you have entrusted to them that your message continues to be sounded through their tender yet daring voices bless our parents with the patience and humility that they are able to learn from the message sounded by these little voices among us lord among us they are battered children who are always being abused by uncaring adults. We lift them in prayer. Today among us, there are parents losing children, not only by criminal elements lurking in our society, but also by terminal illnesses striking our land, leaving parents with emptiness and states of confusion. Give those parents the strength to overcome the challenges you have allowed to come their way. For those who lost their little ones, we pray that they are comforted by your love. For those who are confused about the state their children have reached, we pray that you guide them to the answers they need. For those who hurt and cry for what other people do to their children, we pray for deliverance from those situations. For those who celebrate the success of their children, teach us, O oh Lord, how to celebrate with them too. Hear our prayers, we beseech you, as we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us the family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our church offers many activities geared to women and men, youth, children and family, at which you can develop a relationship with God and with each other. Ms. Sanya Bihari will now share with us some information on these events. Good morning Trinidad and Tobago. As we mentioned earlier, this Saturday 19th November is Universal Children's Day and we really want to encourage everyone to show solidarity with the children in our lives and also children whom you may not know personally. Children are a source of innocence and humility, and we as adults have that responsibility to care for them, nurture them, and empower them. As part of our efforts to celebrate our children, the Marabella Bonaventure Pastoral Region is having a walk for children. Everyone is invited to gather on Saturday 19th November from 8.30 a.m. at the Harmony Hall Recreation Ground. From there, we will be heading to the Trinity Presbyterian Church, where we will engage in activities to raise awareness about certain issues affecting our children 
and also have some fun events. You are all invited to come out and share this event with us. And even if you're not able to, I hope that you can use the day to share something with the children in your lives and in your community. This morning, we would also like to take this opportunity to share with you some highlights of our church's activities during the year when we were focused on our children and youth. Let's see them in action. First up, we have our National Sunday School Camp, which was held in July. Our kids came together to play, praise, and worship together. There was even some drama involved. And some good and naughty elves. And we celebrated together. With ribbons for peace to share with people when we go back home. Up next we have the Board of Youth Affairs Youth Camp. This year, we had two camps, a leadership camp and a general camp. Our youth led in worship. And they spent time together in prayer. There was music from campers from years before and deep bonds were formed There was tie-dye t-shirts. And of course, team building exercises that exercise not only the mind but the body. And our campers took a hike to tourist steps in Valencia. Up next, we have the Sold Out for Christ that was held in Armalaya on September 11th. These services are geared for our young at heart and our young in body who come together to worship Christ with all of their beings, whether we are inside or outside. Our National Youth Convention was held on October 15th at the Marbella South Secondary School and it was a day that was truly enjoyed by all who were there. We might catch a peek of our National Youth Coordinator, Simone, and our young people who came out in full force in dance. We even had a game of family feud. But that's not Steve Harvey. And of course, we had our dedicated band and friends who led in worship throughout. Just imagine, these are all of our young people from around the country who came together to worship Jesus Christ. 
We hope you were inspired today by seeing our children and youth who are active in the life of the church. Take care, everyone, and back to you, Rev. Thank you, Sanya. We invite Ariane once again to lead us, but this time she will be singing for us the children's hymn, Jesus Bids Us Shine. Jesus bids us shine with a pure clear light Like a little candle burning in the night And this world is darkness, so let us shine You in your small corner, and I in mine Jesus bids us shine first of Thank you very much, Ariane, for being so brave this morning and sharing your talents with all of us. This brings us to a close of our program today. If you missed any of our previous episodes, you can find them on our YouTube channel, Presbyterian Church, Trinidad and Tobago. For any further information, we may be contacted via our website www.pctt.org.tt We thank you for joining us in this time of devotion and praise to our Christ, our Lord. You are welcome to worship with us at any Presbyterian church close to your home. And if you're in my area, the Oropuch Pastoral Region, feel free to drop by any of the churches in my region, the Morning Star Presbyterian Church in Faisabad at 6.30 a.m., the Eternal Light Presbyterian Church at Spire Road at 8 a.m., the Son of Righteousness in Rosilac at 9.30 a.m. Thank you for choosing to start your day with us. My prayer is that you and your loved ones will have a blessed week ahead. I leave you with today's moment of inspiration. Train children in the right way, and when old, they will not stray.